<laughs> President Biden battered in recent weeks by a bunch of bad economic news, struggling to solve the ongoing supply chain jam that is set to ruin your Christmas, thanks to a huge backlog of ships still bogging down those ports out west. And thanks to inflation, this year's Thanksgiving feast shaping up to be the most expensive meal in the history of the holiday. But despite it all, the president says the economy is doing just fine. Trump likes to boast the single best measure of the economy is the stock market. I never thought that. Well, if that's true, take a look at the stock market now. It's higher than it ever been. Not only that, more people are working today than just before the pandemic started. Household wealth is up. People are buying more things. Manufacturing is up. We're on the move, but we're on the right track. On the right track, but even Katie Democrats apparently believe he's on the wrong track. Yeah. And the surveys that you see, the polls that are taking, showing his unpopularity, it's Democrats who are deserting the ship. Democrats, independents, you have a lot of Democrat economic experts who worked for people like President Obama saying this inflation problem is going to get worse and the Biden administration, A, wanting to spend more money and B, ignoring the problem is not going to make it go away. The White House has been saying for months that this is just transitory, it will be over in a couple of months, and now we're seeing the Fed chair say, actually, it's not going to be over until the end of 2022. So a full year from now, plus some, that's when they say it will end. Don't have a lot of credibility on that. But when you look at this as a whole and who's really running the economy, it's Bernie Sanders who is in charge of the Senate Budget Committee. He's really the one who's prodding the Biden White House to stick to the left, to do more, to infuse the economy with money. They want more regulation. You have this Green New Deal problem happening where Biden's leaving the country this week to go overseas to talk about how we can give more money from our economy to regulate our economy more while they have the supply chain back up. And Bernie Sanders is a guy who said that government bread lines are a good thing. And so when you believe that that's a good thing, then clearly they're going to argue that what's happening is a sign of progress. Right, this may sound crazy, but talking about good things, inflation is partly a good thing in the sense that it's forcing employers to pay employees more money. So people are making more money. They can demand right, better but, pay. So that, you know, that inflates the cost. The, the, but the, the uh, owner has to pass the price on to the But the wage consumer. gains are being wiped out by inflation. So you're not seeing the benefit of that. I remember, to Katie's point, how Trump closed in the election. He says, Joe Biden and his radical puppeteers want to turn this country into Venezuela. What do we have, Geraldo? We have high gas prices. We got high crime. We got corruption. We have empty shelves, political prosecutions. And then I remember how Joe Biden closed his campaign. What did he say? He says, I'm not going to shut down the economy. I'm going to shut down the virus. Well, what did he do? There's been more people that died from COVID-19 under Joe Biden than under Trump. And the economic recovery is sputtering. So if I were Joe Biden, I would say, let's bring the factories back from China. Let's stop the reckless spending. Let's close the border. And Joe Biden's not going to do any of that, Geraldo. And that's why he's at 39 percent approval on the economy. Sixty percent of the country thinks we're going in the wrong direction. And I don't see how it gets any better after this, no matter how good you talk up the economy. If you're going out shopping, if you're balancing your checkbook or filling up your gas tank, American consumers don't feel good about it. And that's the point. And Terry McCullough, for one, Martha, is very worried about it. I got this note. I get the, uh, the notes from Terry McCullough. He says... He's flabbergasted. Virginia went big for Joe Biden. And now I'm tied, uh, Terry McAuliffe writes, I'm tied with a Trump-backed culture warrior who's pushing Trump's big lie. I thought folks would be fired up to get out the vote. But at this point, it seems like enthusiasm is at an all-time low, writes Terry McAuliffe. Please send $15. <laughs> and, and then, yes, of course. So but, but, a donor. Yeah, no, I, I think Terry McAuliffe is, uh, is looking at this situation and saying, you know, I thought this was going to be easy. Um, this is not easy. Uh, the education issue, I think, is the hot button in Virginia that, that Glenn Youngkin rightly, you know, politically grabbed onto when he said, you know, I don't, McCall said, I don't think parents should be, you know, writing the curriculums. Um, but the number one thing is the economy. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's where people live, right? They see so you think inflation. it's the economy stupid again? They see, absolutely. They see what's going on with the, with the uh, supply chain. And I, I keep thinking about Rahm Emanuel saying, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste, right? I look at these things as leadership moments. You could go out to the, go out to the ports, 
Get the National Guard. Get those trucks moving. Get people driving around. Say, look, it's not a permanent solution, but we're going to do everything we can. Start rearranging where these containers are going. You know, talk to the company. Sit down with them. You know, they say they have these listening sessions, and they brought in all the stakeholders. Pete Buttigieg said, and then what happened? <laughs> Yeah. Nothing, they, right? They, they do seem distracted. And they talk about point. things that, that run past where people are, right? That they're talking about things and people go, okay, that's fine. You know, that's nice and everything, but that's not what's going on. This cultural stuff is running past the problem. But I just want to quickly make a, a pitch for my plan to lower <laughs> the age of drivers of those trucks from 21 to 18, free up a Good huge idea. pool. 18, 19, 20 years old, you got to be 21 to drive those big rigs. Don't and vax I think it's mandate ridiculous. them either. And, vax, they don't actually uh, that, interact with like, anybody, Geraldo. Let, but he has to have some energy right. to fix the problem, he and he seems distracted he does. You know, by a million things. That opening of the clip, what did he say? Trump. In fact, he said Trump, I think, 24 times, once for every time he forgot where he was. Uh, he's not all there. And I don't just mean cognitively. I mean on the job. He's a wounded antelope on the plane. And it's not Republicans who are doing the feeding. It's, it's the hard left. They see and they know this is a hollowed out vessel. Uh, it's collapsing. You got, you're going to get the bail reform, the high taxes. It's time to look past this wounded antelope and see the vultures that are circling behind him and above him, because those are the people in control. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.